Demon Slayer's Entertainment District arc gave fans stunning animation, a beautiful OST, a killer supporting cast, and one of the best villain duos in modern anime with Gyutaro and Daki. Well, its newest season gives fans, uh, the first three things at least. However, instead of the tragic bad ending versions of Tanjiro and Nezuko, we got the cast of Inside Out and whatever the hell Gyoko was supposed to be. Demon Slayer's Swordsmith Village arc opens with what might have been one of the best moments of the entire season, because the Upper Moon meeting SLAPS. We get to meet the rest of our major antagonists through the eyes of Demon Slayer's best villain, Akaza. The meeting shows us that the baddies are up to no good as usual, and we get a little Tanjiro dream about Yorichi, who everyone keeps thinking is his dad for some reason. Then, after a nice little scene with best girl Kano, Tanjiro heads off to get a new sword at the Swordsmith Village. We're pretty quickly introduced to our supporting cast for the season, Mitsuri, Muichiro, and Genya. The actual plot, like every Demon Slayer season, is pretty simple. Tanjiro and the gang run into demons, ah, a big fight breaks out. But Demon Slayer has always been more character driven than plot driven, and the meat of the actual story is usually presented by the interwoven backstories and interactions between the characters. As far as characters and their histories go, Genya is probably the most interesting. Mitsuri is cute and she has some badass moments, but her backstory is honestly pretty silly. Once the mist of Muichiro's amnesia vanishes and we actually get to see his backstory, he's a very fascinating character with a very difficult history, but nothing compares to the disaster that is Genya's life. The Demon Boy's tragic backstory even improves how fans see Sanami, a character that was pretty unlikable before this season. While the supporting heroes range from solid to excellent, the Swordsmith Village arc does falter in one character aspect. Villains. The main villain of the arc, upper rank 4 Han Tengu, is essentially six characters in one. The bad news? Only one of the forms is any good. The good news? That form is pretty fantastic. Han Tengu overall as a character is still probably by my money the second worst upper moon. Which upper moon is worse than Han Tengu, you may ask? Well, that brings us to the worst part of the entire arc. <laughs> Yoko sucks. There's no getting around it. The design is very confused. He wants to be a million things at once. He's a mermaid snake genie artist with mouths for eyes and eyes for mouths who controls water, evil goldfish, and POTS! <sighs> Worst of all, with all that crazy bullshit, he's still not very interesting. He even went down the easiest of any major villain so far and didn't even get a flashback. Seriously, how was this in Upper Moon? The animation is beautiful. The OST is brilliant. Almost everything about Demon Slayer is just as wonderful as the precedent that Mugen trained in the Entertainment District set. Everything except for the villains. With a rogues gallery full of great characters like Rui, Enmu, Akaza, Daki, and Gyutaro, it's just a shame that we got dumb and dumbest in the penultimate major arc. I still give the Swordsmith Village arc a 7 out of 10, but it's definitely the weakest part of the show and the manga. And with that, Subscribe for more anime reviews. I'm Sturgeon Stories, and I'll see you next time.